if you want me to tell you, like teach you about Led Zeppelin, Tristan, I'm here for you, man. As I mentioned earlier, like it's like the upbeat version of a marauding Viking attack song. Blonde, tall, you know, golden god. With golden like, god. <laughs> yeah, he's the golden god with like the tight pants with his friggin'. Take that shit up. I can't even remember where it goes. I've had too much to drink. There's something off about it. I can't quite put my finger on it. Obviously cut this, but this is hard to get into. I'm trying. I don't think there's at least important. I don't like think if you had to, if you've got your head, had to say. Welcome to Desert Island Playlist, Led Zeppelin. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am Joe Opinionated. Today is a fun one. Led Zeppelin, one of the greatest bands of all time. And we have with us today, Jesse and Tristan. Stoked to be on talking about the organized chaos of Led Zeppelin. I've been a huge fan since my late teens and early 20s. It was my go-to for years and years. And so preparing for this, uh, getting to go and relive those songs that I love so much 20 plus years ago is really exciting. So happy to be here. One of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, hands down. First tape cassette I ever bought was out of a discount bin and it was Led Zeppelin 3. And until this day is my favorite Led Zeppelin record. Hold it dear to my heart on the old you know, the big, huge, chunky, yellow Sony Walkman that I had, that I had back in the day. Yeah, so I, I, I know them very, like, very well. Led Zeppelin for me, Tristan, you're like number one influence for 90% of my Led Zeppelin memories. First thing I ever actually remember was your copy, or I guess it was your dad's copy or your mom's copy of Dread Zeppelin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? That was honestly probably one of my, one of the, like, the very, one of the things that, the albums that really got me into Led Zeppelin was Dread, was Dread Zeppelin, because I think it was even before I got that tape. Because that would have been I have to grade, look up when, that, when was in, Dread, that was in grade three. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you my parents. I, I remember my parents bought Dread Zeppelin, and I thought this was like the it was it was funny it was like you know it, it was like classic rock it was like it was led zeppelin that was reggae with an elvis impersonator it was just ridiculous and i remember just absolutely loving that record as a kid hey hey mama said where you love gonna make you sad gonna make you go well don't don't do that. <laughs> it's really cool my next memory would be a learning guitar starting to learn guitar you showing me stairway to heaven another huge one for me tristan was you playing over the hills and far away when you were learning it on guitar when we were camping that was the time when we cut down all those trees oh yeah you're you were, you had your guitar there and you kept you kept playing over the hills and far away or whatever and i remember learning it by watching you that day like weekend my wife's favorite band the night i met my wife we drove around in a truck listening to led zeppelin on volume 11 desert island playlist uh there's no death match we're not killing off any picks or anything like that um but uh this desert island playlist it's draft style like uh hockey draft but uh we're drafting songs for led zeppelin once the song's taken you cannot take it 10 songs will fit onto your mixtape on your desert island you got one minute to to make your piece with the fucking song a little bit of extra time will be granted obviously tristan when you got the guitar out it's led zeppelin the greatest fucking rock band of all time i think it's pretty safe to say blues rock greatest folk rock four members robert plant jimmy page started it all off uh he was playing bass with the Yardbirds. jeff beck jumped ship he took over lead guitar he was already a very well-known session guitar player he's gonna start the new Yardbirds. goes and gets john paul jones because he's another great session bass player wants to get terry reed terry reed just signed his contract for a solo album so he goes and gets robert uh, i think terry reed turned him on to robert plant that part i could be wrong about well he had he had like touring commitments or something i guess he couldn't do it he already had like a bit of a career going on right so yeah he's great too i know tristan's a big fan Oh, I love Terry. Amazing. Super Lungs Terry. Glad he wasn't the choice because Robert Plant is incredible. Lead singer. The last member was uh, John Bonham, possibly the greatest drummer of all time. You've got the greatest of every single element. I mean, if you put them up as far as musical talent goes against the Beatles, they win in every category. Beatles is a pop band. Led Zeppelin's a rock band. Who's a better guitar player? Obviously, Jimmy Page. Who's a better bass player, keyboard player? Obviously, John Paul Jones. Who's a better drummer? Obviously, fucking Bonham. Who's the best, best singer? Frontman singer, yeah. It's it's obviously Robert Plant. I'm sorry. You can't compare. You can't compare them to well, the Beatles. Well, so you, at the same time. You, it's it's you different. Can, they're, they're kind, it's in, kind of different, right? Bit of an apples and oranges thing. It's it is. It's oil and water. They are a better rock band, but the rock. The, 
pop. Beatles pop. are, yeah. Beatles are not a rock band. 70s, 60s. First pick goes to Jesse, youngest to oldest. My first pick, I have to take my, my not just my favorite Zeppelin song of all time. It's my favorite song, period, of all time. And it's been this way for 20 plus years. You know how you go through phases of favorite songs? This song's never stopped being my favorite song because I love it that much. It's from Tristan's favorite Zeppelin albums from Zeppelin 3. It's Since I've Been Loving You. And that song to me is, you know, JPJ's Wall of Oregon, the slow, powerful drumming, Paige's ridiculous solo, Plant's harrowing screams throughout it. There's more feeling in this song than any song in the world to me. Every time I hear this song, I stop and do and, and I stop and just feel what's going on. There's just so much going on there. But you know that drop, oh my tears they feel like rain. That little drop is just perfection. Unbelievable song. Wrapping it up. I hope it was high on your list, Joe. Uh since I've been loving you from Zeppelin 3. Jesse, it didn't make my top 37. Sorry, my first pick. This is gonna be the top of my playlist. If I had to have a playlist and the first song I want to hear is your time is gonna come. That's up one. And it's the start of the B side record, or the, or the B side of Led Zeppelin. And when I first very when I first heard Led Zeppelin one for the first time, I uh, it was put on the B side. And so the first track I heard was you know the big organ intro. <laughs> And then when it comes in with the with the drums, I was like, oh my god, this. This is the best way to start a record. I couldn't believe how good this this album sounds. It's like this is how you're supposed to start a record. Little did I know that was side beat. And then something then people are like, and then 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 you know you would hear that record you know again, and it starts with good times, bad times, which is an amazing way to start an album. Don't get me wrong, but I was just like, I can't hear it like this. I got to hear it with your time is gonna come. Your time is up, and you know what? That was my number four. Devastating, Tristan. I was listening to that song more than any song this week. Okay, my minute it starts now. My first pick. I'm going with one just because I'm afraid you guys are gonna take it. It's got to be on my list. I'm going with Cashmere off of physical graffiti. J Apparently Robert Plant was inspired uh, by the driving through like the deserts of Morocco. The band had never been to Kashmir, I read that. The John Bonham backbeat, there's the different time signatures between the, the, the singing and the guitar. It's a huge song. It's not like a, oh, this is my secret favorite. Like your time is gonna fucking come. It's a hard toss up between like, if you're gonna think of like the two greatest Zeppelin songs of all time, it's gonna be like, either Stairway or Cashmere. I have to have it on my playlist. I have to take, I think, what is another biggie that is especially live song. So it's No Quarter, Houses of the Holy. I think it's JPJ's masterpiece. While Immigrant Song is their their most famous conquering death and destruction song, I think No Quarter is their best death and destruction song. It's more subtle. It's more whimsical. The way that plant comes to life after the, the first lyric, that song sounds and feels like nothing. Nothing else that's been done. It's a No Quarter, Houses of the Holy. That's that was very, very high up there. Great song. If I had to pick, uh, you know, one off Houses of the Holy, other than No Quarter, it would be that one. Throwing Houses of the Holy on when I would just go to sleep and just listen to it constantly. Something about that tuning. I think that's the last chord that he hits on the song when he just goes. Like you can hear that right at the right at the end of, at the end of the song. The Mellotron is a big thing for me, especially when the, the Zeppelin stuff. I mean, Mellotron is a very big, you know, progressive rock instrument. John Paul Jones are st starts playing the Mellotron on on all the uh, on all the songs. That's when the songs like get kind of you know a little bit more a little a little darker a little heavier there's a, there's a lot more going on right rain song number 8 for me uh rain song finished 25 my second pick it's the battle of evermore off of led zeppelin 4 the hobbit and all that jrr token stuff is great it was just something he happened to be reading at the time and he's he's just a tea drinking Tea Drinking Hippie from Led Zeppelin 4, which was the first CD I ever heard. The album means a, a shit ton to me, uh, not just for, I've, throughout my entire life. This is definitely one of my favorite songs on the album. I love this song so much, but like embarrassingly for years, I thought Robert Plant was just singing to himself in a higher pitch. Sandy Denny from the Fairpoint Convention, she sings um, 
that song who knows where the time goes it has a really beautiful song but for years i was like this the the, the voice just sounds so similar i was like is plant just singing to himself the lyrics are really fucking cool throughout i know there's the the tolkien stuff but outside of that too every the prince of peace embrace the gloom and walk the night alone like everything is so cool about that song so you for taking it joe that was him learning the mandolin he picked up john paul jones's mandolin and just like yeah you know i think it'd go like this and that was what came out was the battle of evermore next song for me i literally battle of evermore was six and i was afraid that somebody's going to take it so i was going to jump to battle of evermore next um but my next song number three is going to be in the light off of uh physical graffiti i love this this song is like not one that is that i've been long on it's someone that came to me eventually jpj has grown on me and the band for you know like for, you just hear plant and then you, you hear page and you hear bonzo but jpj is just so subtle a lot of the times in the background oh he, he was a secret weapon man but he but. is he he really is he's the he's the heart he's the fucking driving force of the band he really is and with with songs like this what a cool song in the light is in the lights Kind of similar to No Quarter to me. It's it's a, it's a, it's a kind of the same thing on that album, but it's the and same. For me, John, yeah, that's. But I think in No Quarter, I think that's more of a John Paul Jones too. Yeah, for, of course, absolutely. Arguably, you could arguably say that they're the best in each of what they do. But you know, JPJ's intro when the when the Bonham drums kick in, the dun dun dun, and then Plant when he comes in, and he, Plant's always amazing. But his confidence, like his swagger, when he starts the the opening lyrics, and then when he gets to the in the in the light part, normally it's Paige who stands out in a song like this. He just kind of has that beautiful, you know, that crescendo at the end of that song. Dun dun dun. In the light is slowly going up to the top of my list and it's number three for me damn yeah number 14 on my list jesse but it's funny because last night when i was listening to physical graffiti i was contemplating moving this one way higher Gallows Pole. When I got that uh, Led Zeppelin, I got to do something off Led Zeppelin three because that's my my favorite record. So Led Zeppelin three record, and and my dad saying this like, oh yeah, Gallows Pole. That's my favorite. That's probably my favorite Zeppelin tune, either off that record or his favorite Zeppelin song or something like that. And and uh, really got into it. And I really got into it when I heard the uh, when they did the reissue series. It came there. It came with the companion disc. I don't know how long it was that, seven or eight years ago or something like that, right? So I got the the Led Zeppelin three version of that, and they had a version without without vocals an instrumental version hearing that and thinking it was the freaking coolest thing ever because then you get to hear what bonham's like like it's like the i mean i love the vocals i mean obviously the vocals are amazing on it that instrumental trio version of that song was just like mind-blowing strongly recommend gallows pole did not make my top 37 so thank you for not taking my next pick third pick Seems like another simp pick. I don't care. It's off of Zeppelin 4. I'm going with Misty Mountain Hop. This is one of my, one of the funnest songs ever in like rock history. For me, this song makes me think summer. This song makes me think all things good. It makes me think stereo. It makes me think party. Led Zeppelin 4 was my introduction to, to Zepp. This one, the most popular record because it had Stairway to Heaven. There's eight songs and every single song is like a, could have been the best song from pretty much any other rock band ever. Uh, did you guys have this one on there? Yeah, I did. Guitar player standpoint, like it's, it's, it's a really weird song too. I want to say though too, that it's actually not uh, meant to be as literal about J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. It's it's actually it was actually about it was actually about some sort of weed protest thing, and about people like you know living free and be able to do whatever the hell you want. Misty Mountain Hop. Uh, I think some people were arrested at some protest. My number four song is reminds me of working the graveyard shift uh at dhl at the dhl warehouse unloading freight in the trailers and then somebody would jump in and, and say fucking scream and ramble on at you and so ramble on is my next song i love ramble on ramble on is like it, it's got tolkien again darkest depths of Mord mordor the whole the whole works but ramble on is such a cool song to me I, I i love it i hope it was on your list i hope i ruined that for you joe somebody ended up uh eventually coming through and saying that it was just using his bare hands on a uh, empty guitar case but that fucking pitter patter drum beat that kind of thumps throughout the the, the the course of the song shout out ian potion reader 
Uh, but ramble on, we would we would scream that in the warehouses uh, in the middle of the night for years between 2004 and 2007. Baseline of that is so fucking good. If you listen to that, Joe, I hope that was number five for you. That's my number nine pick. I haven't gone. I haven't done anything on. I haven't done anything on Led Zeppelin two yet. So I'm going to go with uh, Lemon Song just because that riff is freaking amazing. It's funky. It's like a blueprint for a lot of rock tunes. <laughs> Another great bass song, too. There's an amazing bass solo in that song. Next up, not in either of your top 50, probably. Next up, I've got uh, from uh, the underappreciated final masterpiece, uh, In Through the Outdoor. I have the opening track, In the Evening. I love this whole album. I like. I love all of Presents, too. But I do love this album uh, more than Presents. And, uh, and I just think it's totally cool. It's a total... You know, whatever. John, it's a it's a Robert Plant and John Paul Jones album. But you know what? But but at the same time, Bonham and Page like really shine on this album. I love the way that Page sounds on this song. Just love this album and uh, the opening track. I think is probably the strongest track. And glad I got it on my Desert Island. Yeah, uh, that was on my list for sure. The uh, guitar break. Before the before the solo in in the evening is just like friggin' mind blowing. Whatever I don't even I don't even know what he what Jimmy Page does. It's just, it's just like this, <laughs> like it's just that is that is that is like one of my favorite Jimmy Page moments, hands down. It is so fucking good. Maybe I can get a uh, a guitar intro for this one. I don't know. I feel like it. I feel like this is. Uh... Definitely the one that Tristan can play me into. This is a Houses of the Holy song. there is is like a top three moment in any zeppelin song for me i was going to talk about that like how joe you mentioned misty mountain hops you're like feel good song this is like my feel good zeppelin song this is my driving in the car song and when that moment happens the beat on beat on, like i'm in my car i'm fucking hitting the steering wheel at those moments it is a fucking cool song it's such a feel good happy song i always smash the steering wheel at that part over the hills and far away you know who we're, who we're really missing on this whole uh, journey is Ray Baird. I actually, it crossed my mind this morning and I was like, ah, oh, it's too fucking late. Yeah, no, he's like, uh, he, like, like I'm a Led Zeppelin freak. And he's like, he's, oh yeah, he's like won Zeppelin competitions. I had it at number 19 on the, my top, my top 37 picks. Achilles Last Stand, the most metalist, proggiest Zeppelin song out there. It's so like, it's just a like how the how the how the riff starts. Yeah, this one I you know that's one I, I the song I love. I've never I've never learned that one on guitar. I feel like I can run through a fucking brick wall when I hear that song. That song like makes like that song is the ultimate like running song. Like I can fucking run and run and run when I hear that song. It's just got that fucking galloping drum beat. Like you're like you're escaping from danger. It's fucking amazing. Was that the comment? I thought you were kind of I thought you were kind of slagging it. I was I said that Presence was my least favorite Zeppelin album, and I stand by that. Because I don't consider Coda to be an album. Otherwise, Coda would be my least favorite. For me, my least favorite album is Presence. I'm not saying there's bad songs on it, because like I said in the start, I'm pretty sure that every song on every album is fucking good. Hats off to Roy Harper. It's not it's not it's kind of jokey, you know, hot dogs kind of jokey. Like there's some jokey songs along the way that that are still cool at attempts at music. I'm a huge Ween fan. I got a Ween shirt underneath this. Like Ween is obviously very heavily, you know, every band is heavily influenced by these guys. But I mean, like mm-hmm. the fact that you just <laughs> you do weird effects and weird music about weird things, you know, and and everything sounds totally different. Like I fully admire it. Achilles Last Stand is 
Jimmy Page's possibly greatest song. And I, that's another one too, where I'm looking at it like Tristan's going to take that and Tristan just took that. So I'm (laughs) that, that fits perfectly. That's like, I don't know. I don't know if it's Jimmy Page's greatest song because Jimmy Page wrote like 80, 90, like Mm -hmm. of the best songs ever. (laughs) <laughs> you know, or like, or took, you know, the, there's, we haven't really talked about like, you know, a lot of these songs are folk, old folk songs or old blues songs, twisted or whatever. I mean, these are originals, you know, like, yeah, there's might've been some inspiration there, but like, these are, <laughs> they're, all Led, Zepp, they're all Led Zeppelin originals in my mind. Like these are mm. just incredible. And yeah, I, anyways, I love, I love Presence. I do. It's a great album. It's just my least favorite of the greatest <laughs> rock band ever that never really missed. Uh, I had it. At, I put it down low, and then I think I put a note on it that said Tristan's going to take this. Killie's last stand. Jimmy Page highlight. Uh, bass underrated, and then I, yeah, I put Tristan there. I had it at seven. So. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. That's one yeah. of Jesse's next picks. Okay, good. Nice one. See, I put on the Oilers jersey for good luck. Uh, I'm up next. Next, I'm going with the uh, B-side that came out on the Greatest Hits. Um, hey, hey, what can I do? It was a B-side to the Immigrant song back in 1970. So that's Zeppelin Three Immigrant song. So the first two albums came out in 1969 and Zeppelin Three came out in 1970. It's when the Greatest Hits compilation thing came out. Or when the box set came out, it came out as a, a B-side on Coda. Yeah, that's when I remember hearing it. And I remember just being like, holy shit, how did I not know about this? I, I felt like an idiot because I didn't know the song. I had never heard the song before. This song pushed me into a, a, like a Zep phase t- about 20 years ago. when I And I listened to all the Zepp's albums in a row, start to finish on a drive once, back from the prairies to the island, each album in a row. <laughs> I cover, I cover the song in my band sometimes. It's a fun one. It's one of the only uh, Zeppelin songs that I can like actually sing. That's not like screaming high. I was lucky. My first five were Untouched, but six, seven, eight, Battle of Evermore, Achilles' Last Stand, and a Rain song, all taken. So I have to jump ahead. And my next choice is is a song that I originally did not like for a, a while, some physical graffiti, but it's grown on me over the years it's down by the seaside so down by the seaside you know the what 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 it, you don't know what it's called tristan like a, a tremolo effect like that effect that he has on the on the guitar um to give it that underwater feeling oh it's fucking so cool like i remember the first time i listened to it i almost kind of like skipped it it's like a skippable song to me i was like i'll skip this this sounds whatever but it's so cool it just has this contagious feel with it and then you know, then when it kicks into a new, it kicks into a new thing again, too. I think that's the thing I like about Zeppelin songs more than anything else is that they, they're almost like stories told through different, you know, sections of a song. And so when that when that change in tempo comes in and, you know, plant comes in with the so far away, so far away, and it kind of picks up and pace and then it slows back down to that. Like, it, it, what a fucking cool song. I think it was in reference. So go ahead. No, I was gonna say that that song always reminds me like when whatever think of that song, that's that's that song always seems like a precursor to uh like the honey drippers, the Robert Plant solo record from the 80s, where he did that kind of like 50s record. I read that this song too, Down by the Seaside, is like in almost like a like a reference to Neil Neil Young too, who you love, Joe, obviously. Can't wait to do a Neil Young bit, but down by the river, which is my favorite probably my favorite Neil Young song uh, ever. And so he, he kind of pays homage to him with a, even I don't nasal think it's, ear. It's not, it's not for that song though. I don't think like, I feel like it's a Neil Young homage, but I feel like it's more like Neil Young on the beach homage than, than it, unless you know something I don't, is it about down by the river? 
No, I I just read that it was it was almost like his vocals his vocals are a little bit more nasally, kind of that Neil Young, you know, down my like it's kind of has that kind of feel about it a little bit more. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, totally like up 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 for interpretation too. Like you you're probably totally right. I just uh yeah, when I thought of Neil Young, but I'm in a major Neil Young phase. Anyways, the that's my 15th song. So that's the one I had right after in the light. Uh, I haven't done anything on, on um, Led Zeppelin 4 yet. So I'm going to do four sticks. It's the, it's the heaviest song on that record, hands down. Other than maybe when the levee breaks. But that tune is like a blueprint for like freaking Queens of the Stone Age or something like that. Or Soundgarden. Four sticks. It was number 30 on my list. Number 11 for me. I just missed out on the top Ooh, 10. Yes. Yeah. If you want me to tell you, like teach you about Led Zeppelin, Tristan, I'm here for you, man. Okay. My next pick comes from 1969 off their second album, Led Zeppelin 2. I'm picking what is and what should never be. You know what? Yeah. Uh, the people make fun of the lyrics to this song as not being the greatest. And I don't give a shit. Uh, it's totally that sing songy thing that, that, plant does that we were just talking about i just remember falling in love with this song it's very led zeppelin song it's one of those songs where it's got you know the the quiet and then the huge build and the big rock screamer and then the quiet and the build and like that's the ending is amazing oh man the whole song is amazing yeah number 15 for me i love that song it's it's one of my it's probably my second favorite song off that album have to ramble on. Uh, a previous romance he had with his wife's sister. Plant's vocals have the phasers for the one part. One of the first tracks, po- quite possibly the, the first track where Paige used his signature, uh, Last Paul. Jesse, we're in round seven. So this is going to be my first, as you call it, Joe Simp pick. This is like, <laughs> this is one of their most, I think, their most famous songs. It's number 10 on my list. I think it's number seven for these purposes. I just, to me, this song is all about plant and plant and, and everybody, everybody just goes fucking nuts at the song. But to me, every time I hear Robert Plant sing this song and it's babe, I'm going to leave you from Zeppelin one, you know, this is 69. So he's like 20 years old. He's like 20 years old when he's singing this song with more hurt and feeling and passion and pain and whatever he's managing to elicit while he's performing the song in the live versions and it's just so fucking visceral and loud and raw and crazy i i think the vocals on this song are one of the best vocals in any song ever babe i'm gonna leave you it's overplayed but this is a plant masterpiece in my mind everybody else is great i would agree with you on that one for sure live versions of this one are definitely standouts jimmy page does these really cool uh tunings right so you know like you got your Standard tuning, take your E string, go down to the C, put your D down to a C, put your E down to a G. So you get that open C chord. To... So, good off the bat, you. That shit is fucking badass. <laughs> this is just, I mean, just even playing that open chord, you're like, like, that sounds so cool. Am I not wrong? I'm throwing that one on my list. Friends by Zeppelin. Good pick, Trist. Uh, it was number 24 on my list. Next up off of Zepp 3, my seventh pick, yeah, I'm going with Tangerine. I don't know why this song always sneaks up on me almost. It's always better than I remember it. I just think it's one of the prettiest songs ever written. Tangerine. Was that on either of your lists? I think that's the first song I learned on Led Zeppelin 3 on guitar. Another Zeppelin 4 song. Softer song. Going to California. 
from Zeppelin Four. Love this song. Uh, I think it was written. I think Plant wrote it about Joni Mitchell. Did you read that too? That he kind of had like the hots for her, and then he kind of felt embarrassed about it later. For a while there, I was like, I, I I would battle with that and Battle of Evermore for like one of my favorite songs on that album. But I think um, Evermore did win out. But Going to California is such a another really cool song for me that I was kind of go back to. Yeah, I had it at number twenty three. I'm going to go out on the tiles. Led Zeppelin three. It's it's another Misty Mountain hop for me. And if you haven't heard that companion disc to Led, Led, Led Zeppelin three, there's a version without vocals. Like, I mean, I love Robert Plant, but I'm just here in the band, just like the trio, th- those guys play the songs. And you can just kind of focus on hearing those guys play the, play, play those grooves. It's the sickest freaking thing you've ever heard in your life. It's nuts. Is he the least important in that band? I don't think there's at least important. I don't like think if you had to, if you got to your head, had to say. Next on my list comes off of In Through the Outdoor. Uh, the track is I'm going to crawl. Yeah, this could be, um, recency bias on this one, but this is another presence song. Uh, nobody's fault, but mine, uh, originally a blind Willie Johnson song, um, that they obviously like a lot of their songs improved on made way better. This is another song I came late to, but whenever I fuck it, whenever I hear it, it's stuck in my head. It's like. The opposite, you know, they say when you get a song stuck in your head, you're supposed to you're supposed to sing um, Black Dog, right? To get or no uh, rock and roll, you're supposed to sing rock and roll to get it out of your head. This is one where it, like this song. Whenever I hear it, it gets stuck in my head. I was up, I was telling, I think I was telling you, Joe, the other night. I was like waking up in the night and I just kept fucking hearing my, my, my monkey on my back, my, my, my monkey, on, and I just fucking couldn't get it out of my head. It's so infectious. So yeah, nobody's fault but mine. Great song, number nine for me. I haven't done a big riff Zeppelin song, so I got to add a big riff riff Zeppelin song on my list, and I'm going to add um, the ocean. Oh, that was my next pick. Nice, big drums, big bass and guitar riff, awesome vocals, super happy ending. Well, definitely one of my favorite tunes off of uh, Houses of the Holy. Fucking rad, man! It's got that drop beat there, right? Down, 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 down. Like you never, I don't think you guys ever think of that. But like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. Think like it's got it's got that missing. It's got that drop beat in there, which is really cool. Thirty-one. I had the ocean. Jesse was on your. Oh, it was your it's nineteen pick. for me. But uh, my next pick, my ninth pick, uh, is the first song I ever heard on uh, CD played. Uh, means a lot to me. Um, my uncle who had a podcast, uh, who uh, convinced me to finally listen to John Prine recently, but also like his CDs are so important to me, Stevie Ray Vaughan, The Beatles, uh, all of them, uh, just so many different Elton John, a whole bunch of stuff. But he was the one who put the CD into my brother's CD player in my parents' house, the first time I ever heard that stereo. Um, my brother just bought 42 CDs in the same day that he bought the stereo. The first one that was ever played in it in our house was the Led Zeppelin four. The first song I heard was black dog taking black dog. I'm a very sentimental person and I want it on my Island. <laughs> Nothing else to say. It's black dog. Jesse, your last pick round 10. Yeah. So my last pick is going to be, is pretty much, the black dog of Led Zeppelin three. So can you guess what the black dog Led Zeppelin three is? The black dog of Zeppelin Zeppelin three is, uh, is immigrant song. And uh, I don't know, like I I had it on my list and I kept pushing it further and further back. But if you actually just play that song, I know it's so it's one of the most overplayed, if not the most overplayed Zeppelin song, but that song is so fucking cool. It's the coolest fucking song ever. It's literally as I mentioned earlier, like it's like the upbeat version of a marauding Viking attack song. That song, I was totally drawn to that song when I first heard it. Last pick, I'm going to go with How Many More Times, the closing track on uh, the first Led Zeppelin record. What Jimmy Page did on that song is just such a blueprint for every freaking you know, psychedelic guitar trying to get like cool tones and what's going on. Like that's like, I mean, he's basically has it. He's playing a Telecaster through this mini super amp, I think. And um, 
He's got a Wawa pedal and the amp is cranked and he's just using the volume to get different sounds. And like right off the pa- the right off the right off the top when he goes wah 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 wah, he's just hitting that wah wah pedal, just getting these crazy sounds. And then he's using he's doing all these volume swells through, throughout the middle. Like I remember just hearing that first time as a kid and just just trying to figure that out. And th- and and then when, once the band kicks in, like John Paul Jones and uh, John Bonham are just like like it's just such a freaking heavy ass badass groove and you know robert plant is he's just soaring over top of that that song was a big influential tune for me as a guitar player what those guys were doing back then you know back in 69 and the sounds they were creating to the next level with like you know soundscapes and psychedelic sounds and whatnot i mean that was that was a that, that's a big track that one yeah and of course like like days confused and, and that stuff and, and and whatnot but uh how many more times was was definitely uh a big favorite of mine i'm gonna take a song from physical graffiti as my last pick i'm gonna take 10 years gone i just like the slow intro and then just that killer riff i felt like i didn't get enough off physical graffiti and i really love physical graffiti and there was a bunch i was kind of debating between that the rover all of my love i like a lot too off of uh off of uh in through the outdoor i had that one up there pretty high thank you is another one my final pick is, uh is 10 years gone that's great. That was, that was number 20 for me. Yeah, I love that song too. Literally my top 20 was com- almost completely picked from, from this list. The last two remaining that didn't make it were um, In My Time of Dying on Graffiti and then uh, When the Levee Breaks, which Tristan was talking about earlier, but it's just, the I think, the ultimate Bonzo song, just fucking slamming the drums. And then, you know, Plan actually comes in and shows that he's got he's more than a voice and hits the harmonica which i'm not a big fan of the harmonica but what a great you know what a great sound on that track in my time of dying was also right there as well Mm -hmm. i had uh, 10 years gone on my list for sure celebration song for your life the rover the rover wonton song so that's it for the desert island uh playlist put your stuff in the comments below like comment subscribe all that shit sorry i'm a little low on facts high on opinions oh uh check out tristan tristan clark's in a band the tristones out of new york and uh check them out lots of shows uh check them on Bandcamp, all that sort of stuff uh check them out on youtube and go see them live if you're in manhattan or the tri-state area is that the tri-state area <laughs> check out tristan and the trist tones check out the things in the description and uh remember to like and subscribe all that stuff i'm sorry i'm a little low on facts high on opinions thanks to jesse and tristan we out is he the least important in that band i don't think there's at least important i don't like think yeah, if you yeah, had yeah, to if your head had to say Great song. Put your E down to a G. See that open C chord. So, straight off the bat, you. That shit is fucking badass. <laughs> this is just, I mean, just even playing that open chord, you're like, like, that sounds so cool. Am I not wrong?